Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The U. If you've been curious about Terraform, but you're unsure of how to get started, or maybe you've tried and it's been a little bit intimidating, today's the episode for you because we're going to talk all about Terraform and how to get started from a very basic level. My name is Quinn Snyder, and I'm a technical advocate with Cisco Learning Certifications. And like I said, today, we're going to dive into Terraform and help you get started on your Terraform and your infrastructure as code journey. Today's episode will cover on a few different things. We'll talk about um, Terraform, how to get it installed on your machine, and some of the syntactical differences or, or how we use and, and write our HCL files in order to provide some configuration towards an end resource. We'll then walk through a standard Terraform workflow using Terraform init to download the provider, and we'll inspect that, as well as doing a Terraform plan to see what kind of changes will be applied to our infrastructure before we actually make them uh, live. The final step will be applying a configuration towards an end resource. Uh, and then using that same configuration file, we'll show you how you can use Terraform to revert or delete or destroy that configuration just from a single configuration file. Now, our end configuration or our device that we'll be configuring will be a Cisco ACI Fabric Simulator. Uh, don't worry if you're not a, an experienced practitioner with ACI. Uh, we're going to keep the, the constructs very high level, very top level within the ACI framework. Um, so we're not diving into the weeds around how, how ACI works or how it functions. We're going to be focusing on the Terraform pieces and how we can use Terraform to interact with that in a very simple, uh, ex, uh, illustrative way. So before we get started, we need to make sure that Terraform is indeed on our system. Now you can go to terraform.io slash downloads and it will take you to this page. Uh, it will redirect you based on your operating system. It detected that I'm on my Mac uh, and it gives instructions for how to add that to a specific package manager, Homebrew, or we can download specific binaries for our architecture of system. Uh, the same applies for Windows, Linux, or a variety of other operating systems, including BSDs and Solaris. There's also several different versions that we could download if we chose to. But once Terraform is installed in our system, whether we install using a package manager or we download the binary and put it in our, our executable path, if we do Terraform version, we'll see that we have it installed and it is accessible. Now, I am using 1.4.5, it's a little bit older, uh, but it's worked for me so far, so we're not gonna break anything uh, today. Now, once Terraform is installed in your system, the second piece of it that you need in order for Terraform to interact with end infrastructure is a provider. Now, there are a variety of different providers. I just did a quick search for Cisco here. You can see that we have things for ICE, we have for MSO, we have one for ACI, which we'll be using today, and a variety of other Cisco products uh, that are available in order to tell Terraform how to interact or what APIs or what API entry points to use to interact with that end, end configuration. But there are also a variety of others, including uh, all the major cloud providers, uh, Kubernetes, and, and things like that as well. So there's a variety of different uh, providers that you can use and declare in part of your HCL file to say, here's what I'm going to use Terraform with or, or provide the configuration to those, those end resources or clouds. So now that we have an understanding of a provider, let's go ahead and start by writing our first HCL file. Now, these are plain text files. Uh, you can use whatever text editor you choose, whether that be VS Code, PyCharm, Sublime Text, Ultra Edit. Uh, I'm going to use VI just because it's, I'm comfortable with it, but you can use whatever you would choose uh, to normally write a text file or some kind of configuration on your local system. So I'm going to open my main.tf file. Now, this is a matter of convention. Usually the, the, the top level configuration or the top level HCL file is generally called main.tf. Uh, you don't necessarily need to call it that, but by convention, it's kind of declared to kind of be the standard. So we're going to start by editing main.tf. At the very top of this file, we need to tell Terraform uh, to which providers we're going to be using. Now, this is a little bit different for if you're coming from the YAML world. Generally, within YAML, we have a lot of white space indentation, uh, tabs and spaces and things like that to, to delineate configuration blocks. Within Terraform, it's very JSONish in nature, so we use a lot of curly braces to nest our configurations rather than tabs and, and white spaces we would in YAML. Some people may find that a little bit intimidating, uh, especially coming from YAML, but once you get used to how the nested configuration works, and we'll see that here in a little bit with the curly braces, uh, you'll find that it's actually pretty easy to read. And Terraform has a built-in utility called Terraform Format, or FMT, that even if we don't have a 100% perfect configuration in terms of alignment and readability, Terraform will fix that for us automatically. So we declare that we're going to, our Terraform configuration block needs to go up at the very top. And we're going to call this our required provider. So these are the providers that we'll need to use in order for Terraform to connect to our end infrastructure, in this case, our ACI fabric. Uh, our required provider is going to be ACI. And again, we're nesting that configuration. 
And the source for that this provider is going to be the Cisco DevNet namespace and the ACI provider. Now we could put a version of there if there was a specific version of that provider we needed to use. Uh, I don't really care because we're just uh, working this against a very easy construct that hasn't changed since the creation of ACI. So the version doesn't matter, but you could declare it if we chose to. So we'll go ahead and close these up. And we have a full nested configuration there. Now we need to tell Terraform how it's going to connect to our, our end uh, fabric. So we're going to have our provider declaration block, provider. Now this ACI name matches the ACI that we gave it up above. So we could call it whatever we chose. If we wanted to call it ACI1 or ACI fabric, uh, but that name needs to match as we nest these configurations below. So if we were to change the name up here on line three, we would need to make sure that was reflected in line nine as well. Uh, so we have provider ACI. In order to connect to ACI, we're going to need to have a username, which in this case is just admin. And our password is Cisco12345. I am using a reservable ACI sandbox from DevNet. Uh, you could use the always on, or you could use your own personal simulator or, or actual live production gear, or not production, but actual physical gear if you chose to. Um, I'm just using a simulator because it's easy and accessible uh, and, and free to use for just about anybody. So uh, username, password, we have our URL, which is the uh, uh, IP address of the Fabric controller, which in this case is 10.10.2014. And I'm going to set the insecure equals uh, true flag because we have a self-signed certificate on that controller. Uh, we need to make sure that we're not going to do any uh, certificate validation or verification. Obviously, if this was production, we'd want to make sure that we did that verification to ensure that we're connecting to the right device. Here, we don't care because it's a lab environment. We now have this entire uh, configuration for the provider itself. Now we need to tell uh, Terraform what we're going to be configuring on within our ACI fabric. Uh, we're just going to be creating a tenant, a top level tenant construct, as you see here on the left hand side. We have uh, the common infra and management tenants that are part of the fabric already, and then heroes and SNV, which are provisioned as part of the configuration process when you spin up that simulator in the DevNet sandbox. Uh, but we're going to create one more. Now within Terraform, we have two different um, configuration blocks or things that we can read in configuration from or send to. A data source it allows us to read configuration from uh, our end device and a resource is what we would do to send configuration to that device in order to, to change its configuration in some way. So we're going to be using the resource and that resource to change a tenant is called ACI underscore tenant. And we're going to give that ACI tenant configuration a local, uh, sig locally significant name. I'm just going to call it demo tenant. And there's that configuration block. Uh, that tenant will need to have a name. Or we'll call it the U tenant. And we're going to give it a description. Uh, demo tenant for the U. And we're going to close that configuration block up. We have now provided all the configuration that we need uh, for Terraform in order to configure a tenant within our ACI fabric. So let's go ahead and write this out. I'm going to cat main.tf to show what we have there. And if we were to run Terraform FMT, we can see that it's going to affect the change on main.tf. And if I were to cat that again, we can see that we've got a little bit different in the alignment here. We've nested these curly braces a little bit better. We have uh, the username, password, URL, and insecure all kind of lined up on the equal sign. So it can provide a little bit more readability if we choose to with Terraform FMT. Now that we have our configuration defined, we need to do a Terraform init. Before I get started on that, I'll show you that we just have this main.tf file in there. And after I do a Terraform init, we'll see some output here. It's initializing the backend and gathering that Cisco DevNet plug uh, provider uh, from the namespace. Uh, it has validated that the key that we it saw within that provider is the same one that was provided from uh, the developers of that provider and sent to uh, the Terraform registry. So we'd have no uh, worries about man in the middle or bad provider attacks or anything like that. And we have green, which means that everything has been ready and initialized and ready to function. So if I do another uh, directory listing here, we have this .terraform folder, which was created, which contains all of that provider information uh, that it downloaded as part of that step. The next step will be a Terraform plan. And I'm going to use an out file. I'll talk about what that means in a little bit. When we run the Terraform plan, it's going to compare the initial state of our uh, uh, 
the folder, the project folder that we're in. In this case, it has no idea of what's been configured previously. Uh, so it's just going to say everything is going to be net new. It's going to create one tenant. Uh, we see we have the name and description values that we input as part of the HCL file, as well as this annotation that says, that's going to show up here that says this tenant was created with Terraform, and it's going to reflect that in the ACI uh, UI, basically saying you may not want to mess with this with the UI. If we've made it with Terraform, you may want to continue that the, any modifications of that tenant with Terraform itself. We see that we have one plant, uh, one uh, resource to add, nothing changes, and nothing is destroyed. Now this out file, it's a way that we can guarantee that the configuration that I see what's going to change here is in fact what actually is applied. If I were to not use that out file and someone were to change that main.tf file, maybe change the name of the tenant, uh, and I was to do a Terraform apply, which is the next step to send that configuration to the fabric, um, then the configuration would not match what was in that plan state. The plan is just saying, hey, here's what's going to change, not what we will change based on, um, it's, it's not going to create a, a rigid set of steps unless we use that out file. That out file will create the rigid set of steps that says, it doesn't matter what main.tf says anymore. That out file contains all of the instructions that I need to follow in order to apply the configuration that was run with that plan step. So I'm going to do terraform apply tf.plan. And we will see that once it, it was, uh, completes running, it's going to create that tenant. We will see the tenant pop over here on the left side, the utenant. So that annotated tag that says that it was created with terraform. And if we click into it, we can see that we have the name and that it was created from the Terraform orchestrator uh, that we saw through that annotation earlier. So everything is good now. Now the beauty about Terraform is that by uh, creating a single Terraform HCL file, I get the forward action, I can do that creation, but I also get the delete action for free. I don't need to change anything within main.tf in order for Terraform to say that uh, uh, I know what to do to rip that out. And that's because Terraform is as a concept of state. This terraform.tf state file says, here's what existed before we ran that apply action, and now we have something that changed. So Terraform is aware of what changed in that configuration. So if I do a Terraform destroy, it's going to read in the state file and verify, refreshing the state that is in fact, it refreshes to say that what it is aware of is actually what exists in the fabric today. Now that it knows what that state is concurrent or that it's, that it's um, aligned, we can say we're going to destroy that Terraform resource that we created earlier, that tenant. It's going to prompt us because I did not use auto approve. It's going to prompt us if we want to destroy. And I'm going to enter a value of yes. After I hit yes, it will destroy that tenant and ACI will return us back to uh, the common tenant. If I click on all tenants over here, we'll see that that Terraform, the U tenant that we created with Terraform has now uh, disappeared. So I know that was a quick overview. There's a lots more that we can do with Terraform. There's lots of, of providers and we can get really deep into the weeds, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time out to, to learn a little bit about Terraform with me today. And as always, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you.